What up, squad? I'm Leland, and welcome to Gym U, the series that gives you an inside look at how your favorite teams train for championships. And in this episode, we travel to Winston-Salem, North Carolina to put in some work at the Wake Forest Pitching Lab. So if you're ready, let's lock in. So I'm here with Coach Mark, Mark Siever. Siever, and you are the Assistant uh, Director of Sports Performance? Yep, I'm the Assistant Director of Sports Performance for women's golf and for baseball. We're standing in the Olympic weight room, which I learned. What do you guys have in here, and what do you guys kind of utilize the most? Well, this is the Keener Olympic Sports Weight Room in the Sutton Sports Performance Center. We utilize everything in here. We have a basketball weight room and a football weight room. Other than that, every team comes in here to work out. Now, walk me through some of the some of the things that uh, you guys have in this in this weight room. Uh, we're real fortunate with this weight room. Um, this is a fairly new facility, and we've gotten this in the last three years. We've got state-of-the-art racks we built by design through William Strength. But one of the cool things we added to this was Elite Form. It's velocity-based training where we have a camera that will monitor every lift and will kind of watch the bar speed and we can program lifts around that. If a kid's not moving the bar fast enough, we can take some weight off or maybe drive the intent with the athlete and it, it makes sure we don't overtrain an athlete. You're, you're saying bar speed. What does that mean in, in, the, in the grand scheme of, of, of strength? I always talk to my athletes and tell them we're in the force production business here. So we take the simple physics, uh, work equals force times distance. And so the, the elite form will calculate how much work we're doing. Power is work over time. So how fast that bar is moving, how much work he's doing over a specific period of time. So what we do here, you click on over here and you find what the sport is. So we have baseball, we'll click on baseball. So you type in your name, you find your name, and then you start the workout. So it'll have a list of workouts and you can go through and, and look and see what we're doing. You get ready, you get underneath the bar, and then it starts. So what we'll do now, Rhett would get under the bar, get his warm-up set in, click end set, and then we can come on here, see what our velocity is, see what our power is, and see how our work is. And if there's any issues with it, we click on here and we can click a video and see the video of the workout. So first thing we're gonna do is our high-low hurdles. You're gonna step over this hurdle. Okay, keep going. And then you're gonna squat under this hurdle. We'll go two times each way. So the first thing we're trying to do, again, we're trying to increase our body core body temperature. We're trying to increase the pliability of the muscles, getting blood flow to the muscles. This way we're working through a full range of motion. We're activating our hip flexors, which tend to be short and weak. First exercise we're gonna do is our tricep routine. Chris Verna was an athletic trainer with the Atlanta Braves in the 90s. You might have heard guys like Greg Maddox, John Smoltz, Tom Glavin. He worked with those guys. He brought this exercise to us and it's something we can do to kind of keep our pitcher's elbows healthy. The first exercise, we're just coming straight down, coming right down to our side, okay? The next one, we're gonna rotate and go palm back. And the third one is palm forward. But everything starts in this flex position here. You've done one set of those, let's move you on to the last two exercises of this. First one is facing the rack, straight arm, palm down, again, wrist cupped. We want that flexor mass to be contracted the whole time and bringing it straight down. The second one is perpendicular to the rack, bringing it straight down to your hip. Next exercise we do, we'll do it a fire hydrant, just a little hip, hip mobility. So you're gonna get down on all fours in a quadruped position. Okay. From this position, this leg, keep this at 90 degrees and bring your knee up to hit my left hand. See where the term fire hydrant comes, right? Gotcha. Gotcha, all right? So we're getting a little bit of activation. We usually do two sets of eight. Next movement, we're gonna do a T-spine movement. So with baseball and with golf, there's a lot of movement similarities. We're trying to separate our hips and shoulders as much as we can. Um, that's where our power comes from. So um, whether whether you're pitching and you're coming down the mound and land and, and getting those hips activated first, and you'll see what we do in the pitching lab with that, getting our hips activated first before we bring our upper body through, or as a hitter, getting that front foot down and initiating the movement with the hips where we turn our belly button to the, to the pitcher and then bring our hands through. That's the thor thoracic rotation and that's where our, our movement comes from. We want to maintain this position. Sometimes I'll put a med ball or a foam roller between the knee and the wall to maintain that position so we don't get rotation here. We want to stay here and rotate our upper body. Next, we're going to do a core exercise. We'll do a half kneeling chop. We'll come over to the cable column, get into a half kneeling position, a right foot in front, left foot back, left shoulder against the cable column. All I want to do is keep this band close to us and then punch out. Okay, so we're stabilizing the lower half. Again, improved our mobility in our thoracic rotation. So we're getting a little bit more thoracic rotation here. We're also getting some core activation and you'll feel that. I'm glad you were here to walk me through that because the very first one I did, I felt my pet just because I went all upper body. Yeah. And then when you said activate the core, that's when I realized, oh, I really can go if I 
get this engaged. So we're gonna squat. So now we're gonna track the movement. So hit start. It'll say, get ready. All right, go ahead. All right, let's just do three reps here. Good. Good, walk it in. Measures our velocity through each movement, right? First movement, getting feeling the weight. Second and third reps were a little bit better. Measure our power output, right? Second rep was our best. And our work, how much work we were doing. Third one, we're putting some work in. Work is the force times the distance, right? And it's measured in joules. You get your peak work, your average work, and your total work. This is what we did total work um, for the three sets. And so you see that third one was our best. So our average velocity here, you're about 0.8. So again, fairly light, so we can add a little bit of weight to you the next set. So now we've got we've got a little bit of a background and now I know how you move the bar. So we add a little bit of weight to you. All right, so we've got 50 and 45. So we'll go 95 on the bar, all right? So now we end the set, we look at our velocity. All right, so you're getting the idea of what the speed is, right? So now you're moving the bar a little bit faster. The average power has gone up and our work has gone up. So you see all the numbers go up. And again, put you on camera here get after it. Walk me through what you would be showing me like if I had to correct something or if there is something to, to correct. I look at where your feet are, your right foot's a little bit more turned out than your left foot. Not a huge deal. Again, it just might be how your body's face shaped and just might be something you've done for the last 10 years of your life, who knows? I'm gonna look at the way your hips move. I'm gonna look at what your posture is. If you look down, the first thing a lot of guys will do is look down and when they look down, your cervical spine changes, your thoracic spine changes and your lower lumbar is gonna change. So again, that's where our injuries happen. So I want to make sure you maintain that good position um, throughout the movement and you're stabilizing your core. All right, so now we're doing a polyometric movement, a power movement with our strength movement. So what I'm again looking for is how you produce force in the ground. So all we're gonna do is get tall, hinge at the hip, Drive up, land soft in the box, which means I want you feet shoulder width apart, stick the landing, and then I want you to come down off the box and stick the landing. I want you to be able to absorb the force, all right? So when we come down, we're gonna have our feet shoulder width apart, hips are gonna be back, our chest is gonna be up, our head is gonna be up, and we're protecting ourselves. The smartphone is changing the way we live everyday life, and now it's even changing the way we perform in the weight room. The Elite Form Lift Tracker app is the first and only app that tracks velocity-based training in real time. You can finally take the guesswork out of weight training and utilize the Elite Form Lift Tracker app to record your reps, sets, and velocity of every lift with immediate feedback to make your loads more explosive. And the best part is, the tracker goes with you anywhere. All you have to do is simply download the app, log in, and mount your phone on the rack. Then select your lift and use the front-facing camera to see what the app sees. Once everything is set up, stand two to eight feet away from your smartphone, make sure your hands and barbell are visible, and then lift off. Go ahead, download the free Elite Form Lift Tracker app now and watch your lifting power up. All right, squad, so we're here with uh, Mike McFerrin, the Pitching Light Coordinator. Yes, sir. How you doing today? I'm doing great, how are you guys doing? I'm good. Um, so we're in the pitching lab. Obviously, you kind of mentioned to me off camera that it's making it difficult that I'm not a pitcher, but I'm going to be a pitcher for us today. You're going to be a pitcher by the end of the day, man. We got you. Kind of walk me through what we're going to go through today and what I should be getting out of this. Yeah, we're going to take you through a mock brief assessment of how we would take a look at uh, how someone's moving uh, through their pitching delivery and kind of give you an assessment of where we think you can be a more efficient mover, a more powerful mover, and, and a better pitcher overall. We take a look at everything before we get hands on with our guys and make any kind of changes. Uh, so the first thing we'll do is look at your movement screen and, and how you're moving and assess the way that uh, your hips and shoulders and your T-spine are all capable of moving, some stability stuff to make sure you're interacting with the ground properly. Um, and then from that point, we'll take a look at uh, how you're moving with a biomechanical assessment. We'll put the dots all over you and, and measure where, you, uh, where you're moving throughout space. And then usually we would clean up the data and take a look at you, but today we'll just take a look at some video and give you some tips on, on what we can do to get, to get you better. So we go, how far can you externally rotate? And then how far can you internally rotate? And we do it for both arms and then we compare the two. And so one thing that we typically look at is 
the arc of rotation. So not necessarily can you externally rotate your throwing arm more than your uh, non-throwing arm, but is the whole arc similar? So typically a pitcher will be able to uh, externally rotate their throwing arm quite a bit more than their non-throwing arm. So then we would typically measure your uh, internal rotation of your hip and then external rotation of your hip and then compare that to kind of the normal range. A lot of pitchers tend to be tight in their hips, which then limits your ability to kind of rotate and open up and, and throw the ball. So something else that we look at is uh, rotator cuff strength. And so we want to see how strong your uh, rotator cuff is. So not your pec or your bicep, but just those ones that internally and externally rotate your arm. So this is the same technology that they use to make video games and movies to make the characters look realistic. Typically we have players take their shirts off because we want to put these on their skin and not on a shirt that's gonna move around and not actually represent what their uh, body is doing. So there ends up being 41, I believe, of these markers. How much of this is injury prevention versus performance enhancement? So I would say uh, in here, we approach both equally. Uh, you can't perform if you're injured. And so we really want to focus on that injury prevention and the, the performance kind of comes along as a benefit. So the first thing we would need you to do is stand right in front of the rubber facing the camera okay. uh, and hold your arms like this, like you're skiing. Okay. There you go. <laughs> All right, so, so walk me through, what is my, my setup? Back of your foot's gonna go right against the rubber right there. Okay. Yep. And you're, you're gonna come set and pause for a quick second and fire away, my man. Okay. <laughs> it's much harder than it looks. There you go. So you threw it 41.7 miles an hour, you had almost 12 inches of vert, your spin rate was 1,045, and you had an 11.15 tilt on the spin. So it's tracking everything from when it leaves your hand to when it gets to the plate. So, so we, we just went through my data, right? Yep. Just based on how I was pitching, my, my mechanics, what kind of things can we work on next to kind of shore that up and get better with that. <laughs> Number one, I think you just need practice, right? Okay. It's like shooting free throws. If you're terrible at shooting free throws, and, and you might as well start practicing your free throw shot, right, over sure. and over again. So I would say, like, you overall, you don't have a ton of baseball experience, so we would just want you to throw a lot and just get used to throwing. We want to form guys' habits and what they're doing consistently. So um, we tailor how guys are moving um, based on, on what we want their pitches to play like um, and the kind of pitcher that we are um, through their routine so that it becomes a habit on a daily basis. Um, and so that's kind of where the magic happens. So everything in pitching is rotation. So the tighter you can make that rotation, the faster those rotational speeds are going to happen. Um, and the more your sequence is gonna to tend to line up that way, right? And the second piece is in lining up your sequence uh, with specific drills uh, that are gonna help you transfer energy through your body, right? So one thing's about pr uh, producing force and the output of force is a different thing in, in how well the energy transfers through your body. So we want to set up your body to receive and transfer that energy well. And we do that through tightening up everybody's rotation. The first thing is just you being educated on, on what you need to do, right? So we'll do what we just did. We'll walk you through some big leaguers and matching planes for this specific example. So you understand what it is, explain it to you. We'll put you in an environment where you're kind of forced to feel the way that we want you to move, which is different than how you're actually moving. And then we'll, uh, we'll film those differences and then show you the differences over and over again so you can get an understanding from the inside out. So if you just want to come to, let's put your back foot right here and I just want you to go through your pitching motion and I want you to put your, uh, you have your glove on? Perfect. I want you to put the glove, see that dot above the two pieces of tape right there? Yep. So when you get to this point, I want you to put the glove right over that dot and then trace, trace the movement of your front arm over the piece of tape and just feel like you're elbowing yourself right in the oblique. Yep, perfect. Beautiful, man. Let's take a look now. Tracing those pieces of tapes beautifully, right? I definitely see a big difference already because the first one I was <laughs> helicopter. <laughs> so I'll ask you, did you feel anything different or? Feel not really. I think the mental cue of saying, like just be loose. The first time I was like thinking of arm, trace, throw versus just being athletic. It's a really fine line to balance with these guys. And we fight the same problem with guys who are you know, really elite at it but we wanna, we wanna take their natural athleticism and let that shine 
and just build new habits on top of that athleticism.